I've learned a lot. I've learned this project has opened my eyes. It has helped me see what goes on in Darfur. So this is examples of genocide, causing bodily or mental harm to members of the group, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction. It has helped me find like another side to me that I've never known. The goal is to connect these students in the U.S. to students in Bosnia, their age, students in Rwanda, their age, and to students hopefully one day in the near future to Darfur. Because it's so important that they understand how much alike they are and how much they have in common. I was nine years old when the war started. One day, I uh, came home, went to put my shoes on to go outside and play in the park, and my mom said, uh-uh, take your shoes off, you're not going anywhere today. And she said, there's been some shootings, and it's, it's a little dangerous, I just want you to stay indoors. She said, just for today. Well, little did I know that just for today turned into three years, over three years. And nobody ever thought that that could happen to them. I mean, I didn't. My family didn't. Um, I'm no different than you guys, whatsoever. They were trying so hard to make sure I was dead that I did everything in my power to make sure that I lived and that I could be here today to tell you guys about it. I have been very focused in Bosnia and focused on working with students who went through the recent war and went through the recent genocide to bringing them together through this curriculum. And I realized how important it is now for teenagers across the U.S. to understand what's happening in the world around them and to not be isolated and to really provide the tools for students to do their own research so they, can, they have different access to finding out information of what's going on around them. That's what I love these kind of programs because it gives my students another opportunity to see themselves as people, not just as the kid from Harlem or the kid from Brooklyn or just the immigrant kid, they're people. Brainstorm for two, three minutes about civil society and how you fit into it or where you see it in your community. You ready? Go for it. The kind of things we're talking about, you know, um, genocide, really heavy stuff, it, it, it hits home when they see it affecting children. So when we start to do this kind of work and, um, and they immediately jump into it, it just it, it feels great. It feels like uh, th that they want to do something about it and they want to learn about it. So the work I'm going to show you today from Bosnia and from Darfur has a lot to do with, with kids and a lot of them um, or your age, a lot of the children that <coughs> are in these places are either victims or are, or become child soldiers. They're given weapons. They're um, they're forced to fight against their will, or often they're fought. They're fighting um, for their own survival and for their family's survival. We tried to run away, but we couldn't. He chased me and he shouted that if he catch me, he killed me. They say, kill what you want to kill, loot what you want to loot. You have children now growing up in this very precarious and uncertain situation. You can watch this generation right in front of you losing their way. It is incredibly important for the international community to understand that there's a generation growing up that's been greatly affected by this conflict. So the photography aspect of the Telling History Project is that sort of final nail that brings it home. That the students are able to see their peer groups going through conflict around the world. And by having a visual component, gives them something very easily to relate to. I'm writing a letter as if I'm um, one of the people from Darfur to the President of the United States. <laughs> Dear Bush, my name is Miriam. I am 13 years old. My family and I are originally from Sudan. I was born into a big middle class family, but now I only have my mother and younger brother. The rest of my family has been killed or tortured. I used to go to school with my siblings, but there are no longer any schools nor hospitals. 
When we talk about World War I and World War II and the Holocaust, we were not there. We see pictures and we said, oh my God, how terrible. But these pictures are from 1992, 98, yesterday, and we are alive. Then we can make a choice. This is going on at our time so we can learn about it and we can do something about it. That's why I'm so active. When I go to, back to my neighborhood, I tell people about it because nobody in my neighborhood knows about this. And I tell everybody in my neighborhood, I let them know what's going on, and that's my goal, to spread the word. Mm -hmm.